Best sport, worst league. I've used that line so many times, I don't even know or care if I came up with it first. If I did, I should have trademarked it. I blew it. It's painfully accurate. And all the more so with every passing day of these Stanley Cup playoffs. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Did you stay up and watch the Islanders beat the Lightning with the very significant help of referee Chris Lee? If not, the final score was 3-2. Anthony Bavillier scoring in overtime off of a really awful giveaway in front of his own net by Blake Coleman. But that's not what that game was about. That's not what decided it. That's not what these playoffs have been about. They've been about abhorrent officiating, absent officiating, People being paid to wear stripes and not doing their actual jobs. Take this, please, in the context of a 100% disinterested observer, okay? Because most often, when you hear officiating screeds, or when you have them yourself, it's within the context of discussing either the team you follow, the team you cover, team you root for, whatever it is. In my case, a game that involves the Penguins, no matter what I say in one direction or the other, I'm a bad guy. I'm either being a total homer because I'm taking the Penguins side or I'm trying to be deliberately contrarian by saying that one of the Penguins should have had a penalty or whatever. This is... Islanders versus lightning bolts. I could not care less from the personal, professional, business standpoint who wins that series, or for that matter, any of the remaining series. But I do care about this beautiful sport being dumped on by the people who govern it for two straight months now. I don't know who came down with the edict that nothing would be called in these playoffs, that officiating would regress to 1977 levels. Nor do I know why anyone would want such a thing. This is not something that makes the league look good. It's not something that makes Gary Bettman look good. It's not something that helps the sport in terms of moving to ESPN and whatever other networks they signed with that are now going to be taking them off of NBC's hands. Because this stuff does not sell. It doesn't. You can make an argument for fighting. Fighting sells. People pay attention when guys fight. But that's not what this stuff is. Last night, Scott Mayfield, who was a filthy player in the Penguins series with the Islanders, and I said that at the time. I singled him out as being especially mean. I actually mentioned that again just this week on an episode of Daily Shot, Scott Mayfield took out Nikita Kucherov, the leading scorer in these playoffs, 27 points in these playoffs. Adam Graves style, for those of you who go way back. When the late Roger Nielsen sent Graves from the Rangers out onto the ice to take out Mario Lemieux, 
and Graves whacked at Mario's wrist and indeed knocked him out of the remainder of that round and a good bit of the next. That's what this was. This was a hit job. This was a hit job. Mayfield's a really big dude. He came to Kucherov's blind side and cross-checked him viciously in the back slash ribs. Kucherov tried to continue going in that shift. He attempted to hit Matt Barzal and immediately turned around, buckled over, and skated not to his bench, but to the Zamboni entrance to get immediate medical attention. He's not going to be back. He's got cracked ribs. Mayfield did that. Mayfield did it on purpose. He didn't do it to, you know, some other Tampa Bay, you know, fourth liner or whatever. He did it to Kucherov. Kucherov was killing them. Kucherov's been killing everybody. He's been the best player in these playoffs for any team to date. He put a hit on him. He knocked him out. And the reason I'm mentioning all this is that Chris Lee, the same referee who's been caught in countless scenes already of these playoffs as just like a running meme of sorts, as the referee who's standing there watching an infraction get committed and not making any call, wouldn't you know Chris Lee is the one standing right behind Mayfield? I mean right there. Lee was close enough, I'll bet, to have heard Kucherov's rib crack. Lee never flinched. You know how sometimes you'll see a referee think about calling a penalty and their arm just kind of, eh, but it doesn't go up or the hand moves a little? He didn't even flinch. This guy has been conditioned programmed, and now, because he's still officiating for some reason in the playoff semifinals, rewarded. Rewarded. This guy is going to be officiating in the Stanley Cup final. Mark my words. He has been ripped savagely in numerous NHL cities in the past few weeks. And he's going to get rewarded for this. There's something going on with this league right now where someone has made up their minds that the game is going to get filthy again. And that's what's happening here. And oh, by the way, wouldn't you know that Mayfield scores the tying goal to make it 2-2 and send it into overtime. I, I just... This game... If it were ever run by a competent commissioner, by competent people serving under the commissioner, which you would think would have something to do with the former, it could take off in ways that we can't even imagine because of how backward Bettman and his cronies are. Hockey's... Hockey's in a spot, particularly with a younger crowd, where I feel that it, it could just really go on a, on a linear launch. I don't know if it would overtake this or that. or I, I'm not going to get into that stuff. But even the gap between four and three in North American major professional sports is sizable. And the NHL could do a lot of closing off there, become a much healthier overall operation, and sell, I'm going to use this term again, this beautiful game to people who would appreciate it for what it really is. And you know what it really is? It's the kind of plays that Kucherov makes. You know? It's not a behind-the-play away from the puck, miles away from the puck, cross-check on a guy's back slash ribs to crack them and to take him out, to take him out of an elimination game in which 
the other team could have qualified for your league's championship round. This garbage doesn't happen in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, soccer. It just doesn't. You don't see other sports condone taking someone out. Only, only in this league. But hey, you know, Chris Lee's going to make some extra money. Oh, when we come back, I'll try to come up with something. Actually, no, you'll come up with something. It's got to be a more pleasant subject than this with just one question. time for just one question and that's brought to you on this program always by the very good people at the greater pittsburgh community food bank where they are committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western pennsylvania and they in turn need you visit pittsburghfoodbank.org to find out how one dollar from you is all it takes to provide five full meals for those in need i'm going to say that again $1 $1 equals five meals. Pittsburghfoodbank.org. Today's question comes from Ryan, who asks, should the Penguins pursue Philip Lindbergh as a goalie option as he's a free agent later in July? Great college numbers, only 22 years old. Do the Penguins have a realistic shot of landing him? The answer to your actual questions Ryan, are yes and yes. They should pursue him? Absolutely. Dearth of goaltending throughout the organization, uh, in spite of a couple of recent high picks. And yes, they absolutely have a chance. If you think back just over recent history, the Penguins have done pretty well in terms of landing these college free agents Notably, Zach Aston Reese and now Drew O'Connor. Lindbergh is, as you mentioned, 22 years old, and he played for UMass, which won the NCAA championship. For anybody who doesn't understand how this worked, he, he had been drafted. This was in the seventh round by the Wild, and you only have two years to sign somebody. If you don't, that player can basically just hit the open market. They tell the team that drafted them no thanks, they don't sign, and they go into free agency. The the catch is there's a limit on what anyone can pay. So you just go and pick your team uh, based on your team preference, based on what you feel is the best possibility for you to see action. Uh, or whatever it is that's your chosen criteria. Maybe you just want to become friends with Sidney Crosby or whatever it is, okay? <laughs> but it's not about money. It's not like you, you go out there and, and teams can bid on you. So when Zach Aston Reese chose the Penguins, for example, he did it just because that's the team that made the biggest impression on him. It's a lot closer to literal college recruiting than it is to free agency. You're trying to sell your team to that player and, of course, to their parents and agent and everybody else that's involved. Lindbergh would be worth that. 1.24 goals against average, 949 save percentage, uh, 10-1-4 record. He ended up the program's all-time leader in save percentage, 935. Goals against average, 1.62. He's just really, really, really good goaltender at his level. And while... You know, he'd still be young at 22. That's also the same age that Matt Murray was when he won his second cup with the Penguins. So, you know, age can be relative. Um, You'd like to see the kid obviously have some kind of professional experience before he plays for any NHL team. But I don't think you could rule out if you saw him as legitimately a top talent 
telling him, hey, listen, did you watch us in the playoffs against the Islanders? Do you do you need us to sell you on the idea that there's opportunity in Pittsburgh? Or you just want to come here and see if you can beat out the guy who was passing the puck up the middle of the rink in game five? I know, that's mean. But I, I mean, I would do it. You know, be results oriented about it. Yes, the answer to your question is yes. And I would say that about a lot of college free agents because the Penguins not having draft picks, which they really haven't had now for about a decade and a half, can be uh, the, the pain of that can be eased by bringing in more of these types of of college players because they know that they're coming into a system where they're not going to be blocked. And that is attractive to younger players, to their parents, to their advisors, and so forth. They don't want to go somewhere where the system is completely loaded. They want to go somewhere where their, their player can play. And the Penguins absolutely have that to offer. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.